Good afternoon, friends. Thanks for stopping by the House of Tone today. My name is Wes Lee. I'm a banishment repair technician. I started a YouTube channel to show what my life is like in the trades. Got a fun one today. Going to show you a couple of new tools as well. So this is on a Tuesday when I'm filming this. I may get this released today on a Tuesday. So we're going to have a cool tool Tuesday. All right, let's jump in. All right, we've got this really awesome tenor saxophone. Look at the wonderful condition that this lacquer is in. I mean, it's just amazing. You start to see some problems. Really bad bell crush. But wait, there's more. Flip it over to the lower. Can you see those lower stack keys? These are way bent. Terrible body dent here. And look. Tone hole is unsoldered. At least one. So it looks like something fell across here and really took this out. So I'm going to show you some new tools. Because this body is in such great shape, we're going to get into here using a special tool. And I've got a big beefy tool that we're going to use here. Let's jump over to the vise. So today for this project, we're going to use this really stout rod. This is an inch and a quarter diameter. It's not designed for doing any kind of rebound work. It's going to keep strong and solid while we press against it. This is what I'm going to use for the bell section. This is an N74A out of the Faris catalog. And as always, I like to use lanolin as my... So let's get this bell taken care of. These were such cool horns. Had a lot of respect when they were made and got to give just as much respect as far as repair. This rod allows me to really put a lot of pressure down without worrying that it's bending on me. I'm not chasing the rod. I've got a lot of this out. I'm going to switch to a little bit of a smaller ball. Be a little punchier. I've got a little bit of a ridge over here. I'm feeling where it's out of round. It's round here and it's round here. So I want to make this feel of the same, the same contour. The larger your dent ball, the more surface area. So you can use that logic. If you use a smaller dent ball, you can get more, more punchy. You just have to control it more. Miraculously, the body of this did not get bent. Um, somehow the brace and... The body uh, it's uh, very lucky very very lucky so now I'm flipping to the tapered side coming in I'm just going after all the little stuff that I also see super important under the logo because Get under that U. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're gonna work down to the to the G and work that script back. You can see it the low spots pop out. And pulling it back up to the G. When you follow the light and you grab a dent and you just kind of twist that dent staying under the bottom most portion of it. 
and allowing it to come back up to the light line. I'm just hitting in very, very small. And what I like about this rod is that it just doesn't, it lets me put all that I want to put into it and it just doesn't move. It's very stable. Sometimes accidents happen. This one happened in shipping. So I'm using a chasing hammer, a den hammer. Also, you know, it should be known as a chasing hammer. But I'm chasing out the high spots. So I've got little creases from where the deep dent was. I've got a few little ridges and I want to chase them down flat and then I can raise the low spots to match and should be virtually without scar. Just working along that line, working the light line. Okay, I should be able just to knock it back out now. What I'm doing is I'm coming in and I'm actually just tracing every dent line, every crease line that was put in it. I'm under it. And, and riding it back out so just every little fold that was in the metal being very careful just to stay on top of it under the worst part of the dent deepest part small little movements and it actually may come up a little high That'll be okay because I'll use the chasing hammer to blend it all back in. I'm very happy with that around the logo. Now we're going to go back to a larger ball and blend all of it back together. And so now we're just going to do a final bit of blending. Bringing all the ridges and the Round this together. Looks like it was never there. Our bell came out very nice. Can hardly tell there was any damage. You can see a little bit where the case or whatever struck and folded that down. We're going to turn our attention to the stacks turn my light on you can see where the tone hole is pulled away there and just really bad in the body this kit is the n92 sack snake kit so the takeoff on an old tool so you have a long rod that chucks in your vise a flexible metal cable that comes with that's threaded on the end this locks, this draws back. So when you take your threads off, the kit comes with six barrel shaped balls and two round shaped balls. This matches that taper on the end of the tool and they thread in onto the holder you draw the cable back and it tucks down on the end and you tighten it in place so you can go through the bell and this goes down the body tube so you don't have you can have a more stout dent rod without having to use a slotted ball let's put it to use cable comes down the cable comes out the end we're going to thread it on, 
Curtis Faree really did a good job in bringing this tool back and updating it. Keep that in there. You draw it back. You pull it. Get that funk. You lock it in place. And now you can see that we're there's the tone hole and we're inside. And the reason that I like this tool, especially for this job, I want it to be like we were never there. And I have to be very careful around these solder tone holes. I want to push it up enough, but I don't want to push it too far. Go ahead and grab that E-flat pose. I'm going to push that back up. Okay. All right. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and take off the chromatic F-sharp key so that I can get at this area a little bit better. Now it's really important that we work slowly and precise to bring the body tube back to round. When you're doing this, go slow. Remember what you're working with. It's a big long tube with a bunch of holes in it. It's going to be real easy for it to get away from you. Exercise a lot of control. Bringing that tone hole just right back to where it wants to go. All right, now we're going to start working this seam down here. Okay, I've got a couple of little high spots. I want to go ahead and tap those. I want to soften this dent area. I'm hollow tapping. I'm not tapping on that ball. I'm not trying to. I want to blend this in. Coming back up. Lost our audio here, so we're just going to overdub it. So here I'm showing that I'm going to go ahead and disassemble the lower stack and the bell keys so that I can solder the tone hole. After I've gotten things disassembled, I find another dent in the body around where the bell key guard was, so we're going to have to take care of that. Right now we're going to focus on getting things ready for solder. It's important to get the tone hole nice and clean on both sides, so I'm taking my scribe and cleaning off the old solder work. Once I've got everything cleaned up, I'm going to take a piece of binding wire and wrap around the tone hole to keep it in place while I get things tack soldered in. A number five tip on the Smith Little Torch allows me to get in very tightly to get good solder and heat penetration around the tone hole. Unfortunately, the old lacquer was so brittle and tired that it did burn in a couple of spots. So I'll have some cleanup work to do there and then I'll have to try to blend that tone hole riser back in with the rest. Now I'm going to reinstall the bell key guard so that I can have proper alignment and I'm going to use that to my advantage when I do the dent removal under the last brace to hold the key guard in place. Now we're going to thread the ball back on the sack snake and to get it fed back through the body and we can finish doing our dent work. Here's where I'm coming on the back side of the body tube to r remove the dent that's under the brace for the bell key guard. And you can see it pop back into place right there with no stress and everything falls back into alignment. That's exactly what we want. Now we're going to turn our attention back to the body tube on the front side and come under our tone hole in question and just remove the last of the scars from the dent that was in the body. 
and this one's going to come out great. And you can see where I'm going to have to touch up some finish there on the tone hole itself. But I believe we're going to be able to blend all that in pretty well. And now we're getting down to it. I have almost all of the light lines blended back in. I've got things really back where I want it to go. My tone hole is reestablished. Everything is looking really like I want it to look. Here I'm using my high heat gun. And what I'm doing is I'm warming the brass. And by doing that, it starts changing colors. You can see it's taking on more of the golden appearance. So it looks a lot more vintage, vintage air quotes. And so it's going to blend in a lot better. You can really see here from this pulled back shot how nicely it's, how nicely it's looking and blending in. I tested being able to solder with the high heat gun and I could not get it hot enough to make my solder flow the way that I wanted to. So I did not feel that it was a good choice for doing the solder work at that tone hole. And now I'm going to seal it up with Renaissance wax. Uh, a viewer actually commented and said that I needed to try it and I did. And I really like this stuff. There's a reason that it goes on museum quality pieces. It really looks nice. It does a great job sealing in the patina of the instrument. And so you can see our color match that I got out of that is really doggone good. I'm pretty pleased with that. And the, the way that the scarring is so very minimal from what we started with. I believe the client is really going to be happy with this. Well, all right. Thanks, everybody, for joining. How about that? Turned out really nice. Are those some cool new tools or what? Thanks to Faris Tools for sending me that prototype to check out and to share with you guys. I'll put the links down in the description for the part numbers so you can contact them, get some of these cool tools for yourself. Amazing stuff. Having the right tools allows you to do just incredible work. I hope you were able to pick up some tips and tricks on doing metal work and fine metal work and figure out some ways to work around. It was a little unfortunate that I burned the lacquer around that tone hole. I'd really tried not to, but that old brittle lacquer was just, it just is what it is. So there's a little mark. Yeah, it'll be fine. The horn's going to play great. We'll finish the job on another date. Got to do the key work. Got to level the tone holes. Customer requested the uh, Selmer style brown boosted resonators. So that's what we'll go with. So we still have to do all that. So there'll be another episode with this really cool saxophone. And of course, we'll play it for you so you can hear what it sounds like. I'm interested in hearing what it sounds like myself. It's a beautiful piece. Thanks very much for following along. I really appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by the House of Tone. We'll see you next time around. This is Wesley signing out.